of course, my favorite is group is uh, Beatles, and my favorite album is Sgt. Pepper. Next time you come in, I'll play, I play the whole album. Sgt. Uh -huh. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band. Are you old enough to remember that? I know it's an, I know its significance. I've heard it. And Paul McCartney had it on Saturday Night Live about a month ago, and his, they did it on that show. Perfect, just like the album. Um, that's a song. Uh, I get a little high with the help of my friends. Remember that? Going to get by with a little help. Yeah, I remember. That's on the Sergeant Pepper album. And when I'm 64. Mm -hmm. da, 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 da. I remember all those. Are there any closing remarks you'd like to make? Any additional details you'd like to add to your story? Uh, nothing I can think of, Seth, but I enjoyed meeting you and your mom and enjoyed talking with you and your mother. And you're both very sweet people, very kind. You can see it in your eyes. That's how I tell people about their eyes and their sound of their voice and everything. Mm -hmm. Gentleness, you know. I don't believe in guns. I don't carry guns on me. If somebody were to shoot me, I would forgive them and go on. I would never shoot somebody to defend myself. I might shoot somebody to defend my mom or sisters. They're dead now, except for one sister. Because I didn't want to see them hurt. But for myself, I'm going to let them shoot me and say, I forgive you so I can graduate. If you don't forgive me, it'll repeat a lifetime of thinking. Until, until one forgives the other, you've got to work that out. Really. Forgiveness is a key. Loving one another is a key. I have love one another on my piano, I've got it on my car. That's my favorite verse in the Bible. It's love one another. So I'm kind of an agnostic, not an atheist. I believe in something, but I don't believe in the supreme being that we were taught about. And he was writing down the good and bad things in the sky and going to judge us and everything. Our judgment day is every day. That's what we call karma. Jesus called it, you read what you say, the scientists call it cause and effect, and the hippies call it karma. The Sanskrit word for cause and effect. And, uh, Thank you for letting me interview you. It was an incredible experience Thank working you. with you tonight. I can't thank you enough for letting me do this. Thank it's you, been life-changing to see you and Barbara and everyone tonight. It's just, it's why I love doing what I love to do. It's why I love journalism. It's why I love photojournalism. It's why I'm glad I go to the school I go to. I couldn't get this anywhere else. I, I'm so glad I live here in Louisville, and I'm glad that I've been able to meet everyone I've been able to meet in my life. Well, you, you were born here to Louisville, right? You? Yes. This is the first time you met Barbara Saad? Yes. Now, she's a wild woman, but she's got a heart of gold. But she can drive me nuts sometimes with her jokes and stuff. And I've seen her people, Graham, men on the rear ends. Mm -hmm. I said, Barbara, do you know who that man is? She said, no. I said, and then this was at uh, Ryan Salivar. She's been down his back. Oh, you've got a nice that Well, she, she was sitting at their table with, with me and his wife and herself, and she had him in stitches in two minutes. She makes instant friends. And, and she's 79. She'll be, uh, she'll be 79. Let me think. I thought she said she was going to be 80. She'll this. be 80 August 14th. Huh. Well, it was great meeting you, sir. All right, should we go to that? Okay. Nice to meet you, Thank too, you so much. Is mom still downstairs? Yes. She's enjoying Jerry, though. Mm -hmm. I'd imagine. Now, what time do you got to get up tomorrow? Six, some odd o'clock. That's when I usually go to bed, so it's 5, 30, 6 o'clock in the morning. Yeah. Ever since I played in Louisville, when I played at Jim Porter's, I played from 11 to 3, 3.30 in the morning. And uh, stayed up and talked with friends like we're doing now, and I got to bed at daylight. You know, so I'm used to I've had days like that. Sleeping in a day in the, and I'm keeping my body on the same clock schedule. When I get up, I know it's time to make my bed and I, and I can't even finish without a bowel movement. And uh, I eat so well, honey, my bowel movements, I don't know if you want to put this on there. I just use two sheets of toilet paper and wipe it, there's nothing on the toilet paper. Just white as a sheet. I just eat one meal of this is my first thing to put in my body. Other than I squeeze an orange and grapefruit in there. And uh, then I'll go home and have an apple, a large green salad, and I'll have maybe some steamed brown rice for dessert. They say use cook. They say dessert for desserts and use cooked food for dessert. So I feel healthy for how old I am. I okay. have no arthritis, no carpal tunnel, never have headaches. Uh, I have 34 flights of stairs. I'm up and down this 30 times a day. When people ring the doorbell and get in the mail and stuff, just all the time. And I don't have any arthritis in my legs. And my friends come over to do one step at a time. And they're 15 years younger than me. 
Yeah. So I told him, like, you have to get on a good diet, honey. It's the most important thing in the world. You want to eat from God's table. Anything that grows out of the earth, anything that has a seed, and you won't have disease. Our disease comes from fast food, fried foods, meats, and all dairy products. We're the only animals in existence, honey, that continue to drink milk after breastfeeding. The animals are wild stock. Once they finish breastfeeding, they don't have milk anymore. Okay. So I put all that stuff in my mom and sister that I try to get them. They said, diet you might, would you rather die of disease and go through what you're going through? And they did. My mom died at 80, and my little sister died at 46 of cancer. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, sir. It's been you a pleasure office. meeting you. You tell your mom, thank you for bringing you over. And uh, how old are you now? 17. So I'm surprised you're able to let you down. Yeah, he, it's the beard. I said, I can lose my license. I have some friends call, said, Freddie, we have a grandson who plays the piano and he wants to come and listen. Jerry said, Freddie, they can stand by the door and listen to a couple songs. If they sit down in here, I could lose my license. And, and he's a real good, he's got a big heart as big as his building, here, Jerry Greenberg's. Real sweet guy. But I think your mom knew him from before when he was out at Quality Inn on Brownsville Road. This is the first time you met him. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Well, he'll let you come down and take pictures. Just say, if you're not there to drink or nothing, you're just there to do your uh, school okay. lessons. You know? I, have a pre I have an official press pass. I'll bring that next time. Oh, do you? Uh-huh. That'll make him feel better in case somebody questions him. The ABC board comes in mm -hmm. and questions him or something. Do you want to sit with us and then taste how good it is? Uh, sure. <laughs> No dairy, it's just almond milk and made from almonds. That's good. Stra organic strawberries and organic bananas. Mm -hmm. I'm skinny. I used to be 160 pounds then. And it looked real good in the bathing suit and stuff. Now I, I look, my mother thinks I should pose for Thorwood Country posters. So you're looking at skin and bones. Of course, she was heavy. But the, I'm thinner than I want to be. I weighed at 120, it used to be 160. Uh -huh. I lost 40 pounds over three year time. Wow. But I feel great. My energy's good. Eyes are bright. I need glasses to read telephone books, but other than that, I can see very well. I think that's good for my age. My friends, mine in their 50s and 60s, I are using glasses to read and stuff now. Mm -hmm. So I feel blessed that I found this book by this German professor. His name's Arnold Eric, E H R E T, and he had Bright's disease, which is a fatal kidney disease. He healed himself and he threw a 40-day fast and changed his eating habits. And I followed his books to the T. Eliminated breakfast, the most dangerous meal of the day, because it causes you to eat sooner. I skip lunch. I skip, I skip all day long until after work, and that's when I eat. Then I go to bed about five or six in the morning and wake up and have two or three bob members on one meal a day, which is amazing. And I do colonics once a week, honey. Over in DuPont Circle, there's a lady named Lil Hollinger. She's on the fifth floor of the professional towers and they do colonic as a glorified animal. I go once every six weeks there and have that done. Clean up the system. You want the colon clean up with your teeth in your face. Because mm -hmm. a doctor can give you a pill orally, honey, or through the anus. Mm -hmm. and the bloodstream picks it up. So we have fecal matter down there. It picks it up and causes hostility and anger in people. We want to keep that area of the body clean too. I'd imagine. Well, my battery's about to die, so I gotta end this, but thanks for everything, sir. Thank you, Seth. You call me Freddie. Okay, thank I, you, Freddie. You're welcome, honey. Thank you for coming over. And you tell your mom she's a beautiful lady and she looks like your girlfriend or sister. Okay. <laughs>